In this video, we provide an introduction for how you can write the chemical potential of a solution. All right, so uh, in this unit of the thermodynamic stability of mixtures, the key thermodynamic variable is going to be the Gibbs energy, which we can code as a function of the chemical potentials of the components of that mixture. So really, our goal is to find out how to express those chemical potentials for substances in a mixture. Now, what we've done in a prior video is to write the chemical potential for a gas, and that is quite straightforward, and we have it right here. But of course, most of the chemistry takes place in solution. As for example, life uh, is, is a complicated chemical system uh, that mostly takes place in solution. So it's imperative for us to learn how to write the chemical potentials in solution because again the chemical co potentials determine the stability of, of uh, the thermodynamic system. Now to begin to do that uh, we're actually going to use this ideal gas expression as a stepping, stepping stone. As you will see that expression that we have right here the variation of the chemical potential of the gas with uh, its uh, concentration is going to be extremely useful as again we begin to uh, make the transformation from gases into the liquid phase, the solution phase. Alright, so let's see how that takes place. Uh, we're going to start uh, this video with uh, considering just yes, a pure liquid, uh, which is going to be A, okay, and this could be water or ethanol or anything that you want, and this pure substance is at equilibrium with its gas, right? So with a vapor pressure of this gas. And again, there's equilibrium. Uh, at, at equilibrium, what happens is that there is A vapor, vaporizing from the liquid into the gas, but at the same time, there's a little bit of uh, gas condensing from uh, the gas into the liquid, right? So the rates for that uh, uh, vaporization and condensation are the same, and you see that, again, if you're at equilibrium, and that is going to be very important, you have to be at equilibrium, then uh, the amounts of liquid and gas don't change because, again, the rates of vaporization and condensation are identical. All right, so uh, let's see uh, if we can calculate what would be the change in Gibbs energy if uh, we decide for a little bit of this liquid A to turn into the gas, okay? Uh, and that's something that we're going to need in order to be, be, be able to make the transition from this gas into the liquid, as, as it will be obvious towards the end of this video. Okay, before uh, the transformation takes place, okay, the total Gibbs energy initially is simply uh, the sum of the Gibbs energies of the liquid and the gas, right? So that is simply going to be the molar Gibbs energy uh, of A in the liquid phase multiplied by the number of moles of A in the liquid phase, plus uh, the contribution from the gas, which is just the chemical potential of A in the gas phase, uh, multiplied by the number of moles of A in that gas phase. Okay? Great. So after a little bit of A uh, has changed from the liquid into the gas, what you will have here is some final Gibbs energy, and then uh, you will have here that that will be the chemical potential of A in the liquid, and then this will be uh, the number of moles of uh, A in the liquid, which will be the original amount of moles, minus the little bit that has been transformed from the liquid into the gas. And then you have to add here the contribution from the gas, which will be the molar Gibbs energy of that gas, all right, or chemical potential of the gas, multiplied by the number of moles of gas, which now is just a little bit greater because a little bit of liquid has been turned into the gas, right? So if we want to calculate what the difference in Gibbs energy is for this process, we say that this is just the differential of Gibbs energy is just the uh, difference between the final and the initial. All right, so when you distribute this product, you're going to see that this term is going to cancel with that one. This term is going to cancel with this one. And the only thing that remains will be uh, the terms that depend on the differential of n. As a matter of fact, we can take already the common factor of the differential of n, and this is going to be simply equal to, uh, or is going to be taking common factor 
of the chemical potential of A in the gas minus the chemical potential of A in the liquid. Okay, so here uh, comes perhaps the most important point in this whole video. Right, the idea is that this system is at equilibrium. Right, so what that means is that differential of G is zero for either vaporization or condensation, it really doesn't matter. Those processes take place at equilibrium, and what that means is that this is zero. Okay, so that's kind of a key point. Well, uh, so let's see under what conditions this, is, uh, uh, this can be zero. Well, differential of N can never be zero because that's just a finite amount of the liquid turning into the gas, right? And here, uh, so, so the only, your only choice is that this parenthesis is zero. But what that must mean is that the chemical potential of the gas is exactly identical to the chemical potential of the liquid, right? So that's the key point here. If you are at the equilibrium, equilibrium, then what must happen is that the chemical potential of a substance A in the gas phase has to be identical to the chemical potential of a substance A in the liquid phase. And this is very, very, very useful because now we can actually come to this expression where we have how the chemical potential for a gas is expressed and realize that, again, if you're at equilibrium, that should also apply to the liquid, right? So we're going to call this an ideal solution. And we will explain later what ideal solution means. But what we know now is that mu of j in the liquid phase, right, as long as you're at equilibrium, is going to be exactly the same as this thing. Right? So we can write this mu of j of the gas plus RT natural log of P of j over P standard. OK? All right, so that's, that's the, how we begin to write this chemical potential in the solution phase. Now, uh, this is not the end of it by any means. Notice that this expression is a little awkward because you certainly have the chemical potential of the liquid here, but you have it as a function of properties of the gas, right? That is the chemical potential of the gas at standard conditions, and that is the partial pressure of the gas, right? What we're going to be working towards in the next videos is to see how we can change all of these dependence of the gas and just put it only as a function of properties of the liquid, okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, in the next video, we actually see how we can relate this measure of concentration in a gas, which is the partial pressure, to a measure of concentration in the liquid. And we're going to be doing that using the concept of Raoult's law.